Hey, my name is Milan, and in this video we are going to talk about the future of .NET Aspire. The team behind Aspire released the Aspire Roadmap, which is their plan for the remainder of this year and next year, so we're going to take a look at the roadmap and review it as part of this video. Here's the Aspire Roadmap, which covers 2025 leading into 2026, and the roadmap was published by David Fowler, but the whole Aspire team stands behind what's written here. So let's take a look at what we have inside. Now, if you're new to .NET Aspire, here's a very quick intro. This is a platform for building cloud-native applications with observability, reliability, service discovery, and many more things built in right out of the box. I already made a bunch of videos about it, and I'm going to leave a link to the Aspire playlist in the description of this video. Now, a couple of things about the Aspire roadmap. This is a rough plan for the upcoming six months of Aspire development. It's also a great opportunity for you to chip in. If you want to see something specific built into Aspire, you can contribute to the discussion and have this added to the roadmap. I also recommend not to take anything you see in the roadmap at face value because things can change over time and some things that are promised here might take quite a bit of time before we see them in production. You can see a nice little summary here of what Aspire is currently and and it's evolving into a code first polyglot toolchain for building distributed applications. Aspire lets you model, run, and deploy entire distributed systems, including infrastructure components like databases, caches, message brokers, and any other services you might need from a single source of troop, which is the Aspire.NET application. So the first section here focuses on the local development experience. And right out of the gate, we can see a couple of options about improving networking and access when working locally. So we should see local DNS support which is going to allow us to access the Aspire resources with some friendly name like redis.localhost or api.localhost. I expect that we'll be able to configure all of this from the Aspire app host. Then we can see local HTTPS everywhere and I think this is a much needed feature to finally become really polished because currently the TLS support across the Aspire stack is very flaky from my experience. Sometimes everything works, sometimes TLS starts breaking and I need to give it a couple of retries, maybe even reset my developer certificates for things to start working. Another thing you can see here is dev tunnels, which are going to allow you to expose your local development environment to external systems or your teammates. If you're using dev tunnels already, this is just going to be an added bonus. And the next section focuses on the flexible dev workflows. And the first point here is being able to run the subset of the application that you want to run. Let's say you have multiple services that you are, or that you are orchestrating with .NET Aspire. Right now, when you start the Aspire app host, all of your services are going to start running right away. And this may not be something that you always want when you just want to test out a couple of services and having to wait for all the services to start is going to significantly slow down your development experience. So we're going to get an option to only start a subset of services, which is going to shorten the feedback loop. Now, there's also a comment from David Fowler which basically says that something like this already exists. You can call with explicit start on some resource, and it's not going to start until you manually start it from the Aspire dashboard. Then we should be able to execute commands inside of the containers that we are running, debug.NET projects inside of containers. And the big one here is multi-repo support for .NET Aspire. So the team is working on native tooling. It's going to allow us to coordinate Aspire apps that are spread across multiple repositories. I'm going to stop here and introduce you to something that already exists, which you may find interesting when it comes to multi-repo support in .NET Aspire, and that is the Aspire Polyrepo library. This library allows you to run .NET Aspire in a polyrepo setup, and I'm going to also leave the link to this library in the description below if you want to check it out. Now here's a quick preview of what it looks like to set up multiple repositories in your .NET Aspire app host. So you basically reference the repositories that you want to use. You configure it like a regular app host, and then you can start your polyrepo application. Now I may explore this in a separate video if there is interest for something like this, but this is basically what we should be getting out of the box in .NET Aspire in some future release. And the last point here is built-in runtime acquisition, which is going to allow Aspire applications to automatically install the runtime that's needed to run the various dependencies. This could be .NET, Node, Python, Java, or anything else really. Now let's move on to the next section, which is the testing experience. And I think this is going to end up being an interesting use case for the Aspire
our dashboard because we're going to have the ability to view the live dashboard while the tests are going to run. There's also going to be support for capturing and replaying test runs from the CI pipeline, partial app host execution, which is meant to speed up tests by only running the services that are required for the test, request redirection and mocking. This can be useful if we depend on some external resources and we want to mock those inside of our tests. I think the idea behind this is something very similar to what we can do with Wiremock. And lastly, code cover support for your tests. This is nice, but we already have existing tooling for generating code coverage reports. I will wait and see what they specifically mean with this feature. Now, I do want to focus on these two features here because they are the most interesting out of the bunch, and specifically this one when it comes to CI pipelines. So we should be able to record the dashboard state during CI pipeline runs, and then be able to download this, I expect as some sort of artifact that we can replay locally to debug any possible failures. This is also where the first point comes in, being able to visualize the service behavior as the tests are executing. So exciting stuff when it comes to the testing experience. I have to say, I haven't really been using the Aspire support for testing too much in my applications. I typically write integration tests with something like test containers, and this is more than enough for my use cases. But with these new features, I may have to reevaluate this and see if I can get some added value from what Aspire offers. Then the next section is about the Aspire dashboard. And right away we see storage support. Even though it's been said multiple times in the past, this is only meant for development and not real and not production workloads. It seems the team really enjoys what they've built with the Aspire dashboard and they keep adding new features to it. So now we should be getting support to persist the dashboard state and telemetry externally to survive application restarts. Now they do reiterate that this is still only designed for development and testing and it makes sense but I can also see this as a pathway to exposing some sort of API surface that's going to allow you to plug in a proper persistence store in the future where you can actually run this in production. Another thing to add here is this section being able to deploy the Aspire dashboard anywhere and they want to have first class support for running the Aspire dashboard outside Azure environments including Docker, Kubernetes and custom hosting setups. So I don't know, we'll see how this evolves, but it's looking more and more like the Aspire dashboard is becoming a complete solution for observability. Custom layout and grouping, this is just a UI improvement, nothing too exciting here as far as I'm concerned. Cross-linking between traces, logs, and metrics, I like this. Improved search and filtering, very nice. Path pace and reverse proxy support, now this can be interesting because the idea behind this is you want to hide your Aspire dashboard behind the reverse proxy or a load balancer, maybe introduce some custom authentication support, so we'll see what specifically they mean by this, but I'm guessing this is the rough idea. Then the next section is about AI specific enhancements. I'm not too up to date with what they've been building here. I do know they added the ability for using GitHub Copilot, but I have to explore this better before I can comment on these points here. So forgive me for that one, but I'm going to move along to the next section, which is tooling support. And the first point here is is the Aspire CLI. So we should be getting a unified CLI that allows us to initialize, update, run, and publish Aspire applications. I recently made a video where I demonstrated how you can use the Aspire CLI to take your Aspire application and publish it into a Docker Compose file, which you can deploy wherever you like. So we can expect to see more features being added here. Another thing is a VS Code extension. This is going to be a nice addition because VS Code is extremely popular and I know a lot of .NET developers are using VS Code over Visual Studio or the JetBrains IDE. The next section is Polyglot support for .NET Aspire and the big picture here is being able to use .NET Aspire for not just .NET applications. The example to visualize this is being able to use Python, C Sharp, JS, and Redis with zero YAML to build some sort of application. For me personally, this isn't too exciting because I mainly work with just C Sharp and .NET and JavaScript for the UI, but there are companies out there who develop services in many different languages, and being able to unify those under .NET Aspire could be quite appealing. Let's move on to the next section, which is about about AI workflows and it mainly deals with AI integrations into your Aspire setup like configuring OpenAI or setting up an Aspire NCP server. Definitely interesting but still a bit too vague when it comes to what exactly they plan to develop here. The next section is a big one and it deals with hosting integrations and the first one here is authentication support and we should be getting official support for Entro ID, Keycloak which is my personal favorite and easy off as possible authentication providers for your .NET Aspire application. 
integrations. You can also see a bunch of Azure integrations below. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. I'm going to move on to the next section, which is about deployment. And it's great that we are getting support for environments. So now we should be able to define our development, staging, production environments within Aspire. And these can contain environment specific configurations, secrets, and anything else that you might want to set up in your various deployment environments. Now, when it comes to where you can deploy .NET Aspire, the team has quite a bit of things planned right here. And currently, Azure Container Apps is the most complete option of the bunch. Now, there is support for Docker Compose. As I said, I covered this in a previous video, although it's still in preview. And you can see the status here is in progress. There will also be support for Kubernetes, Azure App Service, Azure Functions on Azure Container Apps, ACA Jobs, AKS, and Azure Functions App Service. The last three are planned, and these four here are currently in progress. And I have to say that deployment has probably been the biggest pushback against .NET Aspire because it's simply not polished enough. Every deployment redeploys your entire infrastructure right away and this really introduces quite a bit of risk when it comes to tampering some service that you're already using in production. So we can expect this part of the story to be more polished but also we have to consider what Aspire does and doesn't want to do. The current biggest value of .NET Aspire is local development but in the future we can expect some infrastructure as code integrations like Pulumi that are going to help you nail down that deployment support. Right now, probably the best way to deploy your .NET Aspire applications is still through a custom pipeline, although we are seeing big improvements in this aspect. And moving on, we are almost done with the Aspire roadmap. There's a section for CI-CD integration where we'll be able to generate pipelines for GitHub Actions, Azure DevOps, and GitLab. The pipeline should include environment awareness and secret handling scaffolding. So I'm not going to comment too much on this. You can also check out the content and community section. There's going to be an official website at aspire.dev which is going to contain the documentation samples and walkthroughs you can find a bunch of demos of dot and aspire on youtube and an interesting thing is aspireconf 2026 which is going to be a community event dedicated to dot and aspire i expect we're going to know more about this as this idea gets polished out so that's the rundown of the aspire roadmap and what the aspire team has planned for the future let me know in the comments what you think about it also if you want to grab my free dot net aspire plus clean architecture template you can do so from the pinned comment right below make sure to smash the like button on your way out check out my courses if you want to improve your software architecture skills and until next time stay awesome